Good evening, saints. Forgive me, but I'm going to turn up the volume. <laughs> to the unsaved mind, the cross of Christ is foolishness. To the worldly mind, the thirst of God is ridiculous. But tonight my cry to the worded and herded sheep, the lamb of God is thirsty. Saints in eternity past, Christ, the chief shepherd, the good and great shepherd, the shepherd and overseer of our souls, the God of grace, the garden, and Eve in Golgotha, stood at the right hand of the heavenly throne of God the Father, and with singleness of purpose, peered into time and cuddled and cradled the crowning condemnation, chaos, and celebration of Calvary's cross. On Calvary Day, the regal yet rugged cross now thirsts for blood, the blood of the Lamb of God. And Satan was there. Now armed, accusing, and angry, the antagonizing adversary is active and at his very best, conniving and conspiring to further lower the condescended God by feigning and forging a fictitious and phantom allegiance and alliance with the Father's willful and wonderful work of wrath. On Calvary's cross, Christ, Christ condescended, Christ condemned, Christ crucified. Christ, the propitiation, is purposed and positioned without provisions, thirsty and hanging and dangling from a tree. Christ, the lamb, the captain of our salvation, the spiritual rock, the rock of heaven is thirsty and hanging and dangling from a tree. God's anointed, the Lord omnipotent, the Lord of all, the Lord of the living and the same Lord of the dead. Beloved, our blessed and living hope now hangs on a tree. Saints, how? How did the Lord of grace, how did God get himself in such a predicament? Adam, you are free to eat of any tree in the garden, but you must not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for when you eat of it, you will surely die. You will not surely die. Woman, as usual, he is holding out on you. But you, O oh son of woman, hanging and dangling from the tree, now you will surely die, and you are going to crush my head. Greetings, you who are highly favored. Behold your son, hanging and dangling from a tree, waiting wanting and wishing to die. Is this any way to treat a son, son of Mary, the faithless, fruitless, and fatherless one? You must have been a beautiful baby, cause baby, look at you now, hanging and dangling from a tree. I am winning the day. Woman, command him to come down from the tree. You are his mother, aren't you? Light of the world, transfigure now. Show the world your glory. Call upon Elijah. You provided him bread. Perhaps he will provide bread for you. Oh, that's right. The bread of life is thirsty, not hungry. My bad. Well then, call upon your servant Moses. Now surely he can strike water. Oh, that's right. You are the forsaken one hanging and dangling from the tree, fatherless and all alone, nailed, naked, and now thirsty. Pity, pity, pity. Tell me, living waters of life, now perched and parched and soon to be pierced, in all this foolishness, what have you accomplished? All things have been accomplished. Savior of our souls and Lord of our lives, behold, the Messiah arrives. God in the flesh, mankind's very best. Christ crucified on Calvary's high, sinless yet condemned to die. As commoner, criminal, and accursed, reduced to society's worst. Begotten of God, the only, the first, the living waters of life, yet I thirst. Jesus, knowing all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled said, I thirst. Manna, are you thirsty? Does your soul thirst for the living God? 
Jesus said, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Psalm 22 and 15, my strength is dried up like a pot shirt and my tongue clings to my jaws. You have brought me to the dust of death. Saints, salvation is a contentious proposition and the trial, temptation and thirst of Jesus was real. A real man in a real human body. But Jesus is God and God is thirsty. But where are his provisions? Emmanuel, God with us is without the most basic of human necessities. But saints, how? How did God get himself in such a predicament? Beloved, the God man walks on water, yet on the cross he thirsts. Manna, what manner of man is this? I divided the waters from the waters, yet I thirst. I gave the atoms of hydrogen its purpose and oxygen its relevance. H to the O, yet I thirst. I hummed, roll, roll, roll your bow to Noah throughout the great flood, yet I thirst. I healed Naomi's leprosy in the Jordan River and made his bottom as smooth as a baby, yet I thirst. I offered the Samaritans living waters so they would thirst no more. Yet, I thirst. I dip my fingers into the depths of the deepest oceans. Yet, I thirst. Manna, I give you my word. He that believeth on me shall never thirst. Yet, I thirst. Saints, there was a problem. And as God the Father peered into salvation on Calvary Day, he prepped and purposed his most prized and precious possession, his personal, perfect, and priceless lamb, the Lamb of God. However, his predestined and profound solution to sin presented a most peculiar problem. Not only was there a supernatural blood and water requirement, but propitiation for the penalty required a proportionate payment of suffering. Passionately, he then wrapped his wrath upon the suffering servant at Calvary's altar of promise. The father's perspective and sovereign solution to the sin and salvation problem was perplexing yet proper and both perpetual and providential. On Calvary's cross, the Lamb of God was purposeful and purpose-filled, for he was profoundly perched, perfectly positioned, prophetically pierced, and painfully parched. I thirst, and the Father was pleased. As the darkness of judgment prevailed in the hearts and minds of the Calvary crowd, the Passover lamb hung high in humility and humbled in humanity as he hollowed the most basic of human needs. I thirst a man of sorrows, erected as criminal, dejected as man, and rejected as God. And as we look to salvation's cross, we find Jesus being mocked as prophet, savior, and king, and the subject of schemes, slander, and scorn. But as beneficiaries of God's most beautiful, bountiful, and boundless blessing, what we really witness is a weary yet wonderful work of grace. The soldier of salvation is thirsty, and a sip or sponge of the Calvary soldier's wine vinegar simply won't do. God is thirsty. Jesus, the Savior, the supernatural soldier of salvation. Jesus, the Lamb of God, the selfless, sacrificial, and suffering servant. God, the bread of life, is thirsty. But how did God get himself in such a predicament? How? Love came down. The lighthouse of love came down and he lowered himself. Jesus, the condescended God, Christ stepped out of eternity into time and clothed himself in humanity and landed naked on the Father's altar. And now the condescended God is thirsty. And everyone and everything is still trying to lower the condescended God. Note the adversary. If you are the son of God, then throw yourself down from here. The Calvary crowd, save yourself. If you are the son of God, come down from the cross. And the criminal on the cross, the criminal, even Calvary's condemned. If you are the Christ, save yourself and us. Let us come down and perhaps share a drink. Everyone and everything is still trying to lower the condescended God. But how low can you go? How low? God hung in humanity, nailed, naked, and now thirsty. 
I sink to the miry depths where there is no foothold. I have come to the deep waters. The floods engulf me. Manna, the trial, temptation, and thirst of Jesus was real. And while hanging and dangling from the cross, what if, what if Calvary's persistent chaotic crowd provoked the now pained Prince of Peace to proclaim a precatory prayer? For the wrath warrior was mocked, challenged, beaten, and even watered with spit. Jesus was sprinkled and saturated with the sons of hypocrisies, salacious lies, and salivating sins. Crucify him. Give us Barabbas. Crucify him. Away with him. Crucify him. Mocking, challenging, beating, and spitting. I thirst. Mocking and spitting. Challenging and spitting. Beatings and spitting. Spitting and spitting and spitting. I'm thirsty enough. And where is justice? Contend, O oh Lord with those who contend with me. Fight against those who fight against me. Take up shield and buckler. Arise and come to my aid. Brandish spear and javelin against those who pursue me. Say to my soul, I am your salvation. Saints, did I mention salvation was a contentious proposition? I did. I thirst. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Saints, thanks be to God. The reviled Christ did not revile in return and call upon the precatory prayer. Thanks be to God, the condescended God did not come down from the altar. Thanks be to God, the unchangeable one did not quench his thirst of humanity. And thanks be to God, the lamb brought purification and sought our salvation, justification and sanctification and not his justice. Jesus is thirsty. And where is his provision? Salvation salutes and sounds the trumpet. Thanks be to God. Jesus is the provision. Saints, the father provided the perfect providential and perpetual provision for the sin of mankind a sanctified, supernatural, sacrificial, sinless, and self-denying, soul-saving offering, the Lamb of God, the burden bearer, the Son of God, the wrath warrior, Jesus, the water walker, the Christ, the soul savior, Jesus, the Christ, the thirst quencher that satisfies and fortifies our faith. And he showed me a pure river of the water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God and of the Lamb. Saints, are you thirsty? Jesus said, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Come and drink of the Spirit of God. Manna, it's time to drink of the wisdom of God. And someone, please, please inform the adversary regarding the foolishness of the cross. The debt of the transgression in the garden has been paid in full by the sacrifice on the cross. Christ, Christ creator, Christ condescended, Christ crucified, Christ conquered. For after he made purification of sins, Jesus, the radiance of God's glory, took his seat and sat at the right hand of the majesty on high with the keys of death hanging and dangling in his hand. For Jesus did not say some things, nor most things, but Jesus said, all things have been accomplished. Thank you.